Like Cindy on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Cindy Graves Show. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. And now, back to Florida's queen of conservative talk, Cindy Graves. And welcome back to the Cindy Graves Show. It's a busy day. We're talking about IRS scandals and the poor Congress up there is absolutely covered up, especially in the House. We're not too pleased, as usual, with Senator Nelson and giving illegals a part of this um, immigration bill that just won't go away. They have now granted as part of that bill um, that will never see the light of day in the House, regardless of um, how many wonderful speakers they send spinning it all over America, like our own U.S. Senator Marco Rubio. But now they have gone and included welfare as an immediate granting to anyone who is a newly legal alien, meaning an illegal alien that switches to a legal alien will immediately be eligible for benefits. I don't see how we can afford that. Someone who knows all about a budget and balancing a budget and keeping it um, real is our own representative, Daniel Davis. He has some new digs that he's going to be going to soon there at the Regional Chamber of Commerce, and that's one of the biggest, as I understand, in the country. We'll go to him right now. Daniel Davis, welcome to the Cindy Graves Show. Big doings, huh? How are you doing, Cindy? Oh, I I couldn't be better. I'll tell you what. It, it, it's so frustrating. You can hardly keep up with the news with everything piling out of Washington. It seems like there's a lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> well, there certainly is, and, and we, we've got some good leaders, I think, from from our perspective, especially in the House, you know, with Congressman DeSantis and Congressman Crenshaw and Congressman Yoho. They seem to be fighting the good fight. Right, right. Well, I'm pretty excited about uh, some of the things going on in Northeast Florida, too, and and uh, obviously we just finished up the legislative session, and and uh, you know I had some big news last week with uh, being selected as the new president and CEO of the chamber. And well, that was just uh, so real- surprising. It's so it's such an exciting yeah. thing that this chamber. Th- this isn't like your regular little chamber of commerce over in Bradford County mm-hmm. or something. Th- th- this is a huge business here. Tell us about it. It, it is. It, we're one of the largest in the nation, and uh, we're responsible for being the first point of contact for all sorts of companies that wish to move to northeast florida and and for you know you, you know you've known me for a long time Cindy, and, and the opportunity that i've had to try to grow jobs and, and create a better economy for our small medium large businesses this is a, really a dream come true to to be able to do this full time and and work with different people and try to bring them to our our great part of the state well, I think we do have the best part of the state. You know, not I mean everybody should come to Florida anyway. We don't have any any taxes, you know, that that right. we have to pay on the state level and thank goodness you guys are keeping it real in the legislature and and passed us through another year without having to institute that. Right. Um but you know, especially here in Northeast Florida, it's just beautiful and the beaches and the river and, and all the other things that we have to offer. So we, not only do we have all the natural resources, but we have a very diverse uh, economy. And that, that creates strength when you're not relied, reliable. You don't have to rely on one segment of an, in any industry to, to be able to pay the people that live here. So we're excited about that and, and really uh, working hard to become the logistics capital of the world with our great port and opportunities out at Cecil Commerce Center and, and with the banking community here locally and insurance company. I, I just think that there's the sky's the limit. I'm really excited to be a part of it. Well, especially with that port, you know, it, the port doesn't sound sexy, but it is very interesting when you think of all the different places that, that people can ship out of. Jacksonville is poised to actually grow that thing into, you know, something like the Suez Canal of the East Coast. Absolutely. I think that uh, we're, we're making the strides and working with the, the state and federal government to make sure that we have the right infrastructure in place that once we get we are able to have the containers disembark and we'll be able to move them across the united states within um a day's time it is just an opportunity that i think that we have to capitalize on i appreciate uh the work of the uh, governor's office and the the state uh legislature to to make sure we have the funds necessary to make sure that we have the uh, right right uh, type of uh, capital in place well, we certainly appreciate you too. And speaking of infrastructure, another big um, win over in Tallahassee this, this legislative session was education and students here in Florida. Tell us some about what, about some of the things that y'all did over there. Well, uh, obviously the economy is starting to turn around a little bit more, and and we still want to make sure we hold everybody to high standards. And we've seen since we've we've been holding uh, students and uh, schools to high standards that people have been reaching the criteria and. And now we're able to put a little bit more money back in the classroom, and, and that's just a great thing. And I appreciate the hard work of uh, the delegation from Duval County, including Janet uh, Atkins, who uh, chaired uh, one of the education committees. And 
we worked very hard to make sure that we uh, we got our uh, piece of the pie and um, making sure that we bring some money back to uh, the education facilities in Northeast Florida because obviously education is critical when people are looking at relocating their businesses. Sure, it we is. want to make sure that the workforce is skilled. Um, fortunately, we have a lot of skilled uh, laborers here in Northeast Florida with um, maybe people retiring from the Navy and and um, people that have been educated well to create jobs here in Northeast Florida. So education is a major, major part of economic development, and I'm excited about us having the opportunity to prove that. Well, and also when you, when you think that that the per student funding going up four hundred and twelve dollars that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you multiply that by all the students in this country, I mean in this state, I mean that that that's huge. That is, and and we know that the, the we have to have an educated uh, workforce that we're going to grow, and that we need to focus on uh, the STEM programs uh, that really create jobs and high paying jobs and. Um, I think that the state is moving in that direction. I think that we are locally, too. So I'm really excited about that. I am, too. You know, and I hate to bring up bad news, but I really thought that, that the Mayor Brown's attack of the governor talking about a $550,000 project that didn't make it through the, the budget process or that he vetoed, you know, was, was kind of um, tacky considered, considering the billion dollars in funding for K-12 through education. I just thought I'd bring that up since I was we were talking about it. But anyway, back to you, Daniel Davis, and the legislature and all the wonderful things that you, the gifts that you bring to our regional chamber of commerce what, what, what's going to happen with your legislative seat you know i'm sitting on the edge of my seat i can't wait to hear <laughs> well you know we we're going to uh, be very deliberate in our decision when it comes to this i want to make sure that we do what's right for the community uh, both the, the chamber community uh, the business community and uh, the people that we represent so I, i'm we're going to we're going to come up with with the answer in the next uh, couple weeks and and uh, I, I can promise you this that we're going to do what's right for the community um, the chamber job is a very big job, and it affects thousands of people in Northeast Florida. And when we have a strong and vibrant economy, uh, quality of life is much better for everybody. And so I have to take that very, very serious. It's, it's not – I don't take it lightly at all, and I can't wait to get in there and roll my sleeves up and, and do what we can to bring these major corporations to, to our part of the state. And um, we're going to, like I said, make a de- very deliberate and methodical decision to make sure we do what's right for the community. Well, I know you will. You, you've got a long history of doing that, Daniel, you, from your service with the council all the way you know, into this. But if, if you end up flipping the seat, it is going to be funny. P- people will probably be afraid to w- run for it because every time, or maybe not afraid, every, every time anybody gets in that seat, they get promoted. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty interesting because obviously uh, it, for the listeners that when Jennifer Carroll was selected to be the lieutenant governor, that's when I had the opportunity uh, to, and you were a major part of that. So, um, we're this. This is a very interesting seat for sure. <laughs> it certainly is. Well, so the the first. W- w- when do you start this new job? Uh, we will. We're transitioning now, and uh, we'll start July first uh, for real. But um, clearly, we're started. We we started as soon as we were announced, and and you know I, I've got a um, a great organization that I work for now at the Northeast Florida Builders Association that will kind of go through the similar process of a search committee and a transition team and finding the right person uh, to fill my spot over here because as you know the construction industry is absolutely critical to the health of our economy so sure. we start we're starting to see things turn around here and we're starting to see uh, uh, home prices go up. I just read an article this weekend that a UNF economist uh, put a study together showing that house prices in Northeast Florida went up two percent in the spring. Um, so that is that is a huge deal for all of us because we're not going to be a perpetually declining market. We're we're on the increase again, and and that means that that's going to create more jobs and more retail and, and a more vibrant economy. So right. I'm I'm excited about this transition, and I think it's good for for both organizations. Well, in all the different bills and things, that, the processes that you've been involved in in Tallahassee ha- have to just give you even a stronger backup bone because part of the chamber, I mean, I guess you'll have, what, a $7 million budget? P- part of yep. that is also interfacing with government, correct? Absolutely. It's critical to uh, be able to understand who the players are, um, to know, and, and I can use that my experience uh, from, on the state and local level to, to make sure that we're knocking on the right doors and, and the projects that need to be approved get approved. I'm going to work very hard and use the, the friends that I have in Tallahassee to make sure when we partner with them as a city, uh, the state is coming to the table with us, and, and I can't wait for that. I mean, any type of economic development 
major economic development project, we have uh, the city of the city of Jacksonville and the, the different municipalities around uh, the city of Jacksonville are partnering with the state of Florida. So we have to have uh, very good relationships, and I've built up strong friendships over in Tallahassee, and, and look forward to uh, utilizing those when we are able to bring thousands of jobs to our state. Well, there you go. Well, you make friends everywhere you go because I remember when you were, we were trying to fill the Jennifer Carroll seat with the um, state committee people voting on that. We, we got so many calls, you know, not only from just Jacksonville, from all around Northeast Florida, people that whose lives that you had touched that thought you'd do a good job over in Tallahassee, and I know you'll do a good job at the chamber, too. Well, I'm excited about it. I'm, I've, I've had a permanent smile on my face for about a week. <laughs> well, spe- speaking <laughs> of something I want to catch up with you on, I ca- I'd be remiss in not asking you, how are those chickens? I think you were on our show like a year ago, and it was right around Mother's Day, and I had to take you to task for buying your wife a chicken coop. <laughs> hey, listen, she asked me for the chicken coop. It wasn't like I, I forced it on her. And we have six very healthy, fat chickens, that, and, and each one of them lay at least an egg a day. Really? So um, our, our kids, uh, it's a great opportunity for the kids. They clean the chicken coop every Saturday. Um, they they collect the, the eggs. Uh, we're, we're showing them how it's it's almost a small little business we have going in our backyard. We're <laughs> understanding that eggs just don't happen, that you have to actually work to be able to feed yourself. So, so we're excited about the principles and, and the things that we can teach our kids through this process. But it's pretty funny. You look out on the back porch, on the back porch and, you know, I got six chickens running around in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I'll never forget that. I think it's so funny. We really do appreciate you. Now, the other $10 million question that's being asked of a lot of leaders these days are you running for mayor in 2016? Uh, no, I, I am not. Like I said earlier, this is a, a very uh, daunting task at the chamber. I take it very seriously. And I, I do not have my mind focused on anything other than creating jobs in Northeast Florida. And I can't wait to work with the fine people and the fine members of the chamber to do that. Well, we can't wait to see what you do. And, and you were a great leader, not only at the state level, but also um, with the Northeast Florida builders. And, and I know that you gave them a sterling reputation here in Northeast Florida. And we sure do appreciate you. Daniel Davis, we hope you'll come on and give us updates from time to time. Absolutely. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. And we can't wait um, to see if it, what, what improvements you can make with your political background into the straw polls. When the you know It's the chamber that does the straw polls, Alexander. So with uh, <laughs> Representative Davis's background, they can get even more exciting when the political yeah, season hits again. We're excited about it. Look forward to be a big part. Oh, thank you. Representative Daniel Davis will keep our listeners informed. He's one of our favorites and, and someone that is so well thought of in Northeast Florida. They made a great pick for the Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce, and I think that it'll be interesting. When we come back, we're going to talk about another mayor's race in New York City that you might be interested in, as well as bringing you up to date on a few things that is that are breaking news. Um, and so keep it right here on 600 WBOB. The Cindy Graves Show.